I have the great pleasure now being joined by Dr. Vasken Dilsizian, who is the incoming president of the Society of Nuclear Medicine and Molecular Imaging. Thank you for being here. Congratulations. Thank you very much. It's a pleasure. Let's talk about your goals for the upcoming year. Uh, well, first, I want to say I'm very honored uh, to uh, and humbled to be uh, the spokesperson for such a great organization, Society of Nuclear Medicine and Molecular Imaging. Just as a background, uh, I came uh, to the field in a very uh, unusual pathway, if, I, if you may. I first was an internal medicine resident and did my cardiology fellowship. So I was a cardiologist uh, and during my research investigation in the field of myocardial viability, I actually discovered the uh, interesting field of nuclear medicine. So then I went to the NIH and during my investigations I decided that I want to pursue another degree in nuclear medicine and that's how I became nuclear medicine physician as well. So. Uh, as I always say to people, I found the field, the field didn't find me. And so I'm really passionate about the field. I'm uh, amazed what it can do, particularly in patients. Uh, we have a lot of imaging techniques that are anatomical, like CT scans or MRIs. What nuclear medicine does, or nuclear imaging approaches, is so-called molecular approaches. So what we do is we label a specific ligand or receptor and it's almost like targeting uh, specific cells or specific organs in the body. If I send something to diagnose whether something is malignant or not, now I change the probe to something that kills the cells as it sends there. You could see how this is fascinating. So the whole field of nuclear medicine is changing from diagnostics to therapeutics. They're both important, obviously. You diagnose and then you treat. So that's why they're by the term theranostics. It really would be a nice pleasure to represent the patients and the referring physicians, as well as the entire society of oh, such a fascinating field. It's rapidly growing with so much potential for patients. The people here, the people in the society, know about what that potential is. But as you mentioned, People at home only know certain things. So I know outreach has been a really big part of yeah. your passion yes. to help people understand what the possibilities are. How will yeah. that change or grow with yeah. your presidency? Well, that will be a priority uh, because uh, you, you point out that that's very important, if, particularly these days with media and social media. I think the traditional newspapers and magazines are very important. I think we need to continue to do that. We need to continue to have our members be our ambassadors of our patients. They should be approaching the local news media and tell the stories, uh, how their patients improve, particularly the patients tell their own stories, how particular therapy has changed their lives. And we need to communicate that, therefore, through traditional news media as well as social media. And I think that we need to, uh, we need to make sure that everybody understands uh, the strength of these new, new therapies, just like we understand radiation oncology, immunotherapy, I think that it will be very important for us as a field to be able to communicate that to our referring physicians, to our patients, and to our government agencies who are approving these agents, and particularly CMS, because once you have an agent approved, you also need to be reimbursed. I think those go hand in hand, and our role as leaders of the society is to make sure uh, those are uh, appropriately presented to the government agencies. In terms of this meeting, you're so passionate, and I don't know yeah. the people who are gathered here yeah. are as well. Is there something that you're particularly excited about? Well, the meeting is a great place where not only you meet your colleagues and you learn about all the new scientific inventions and what's going to be coming up in the future, but it's also a place where you see the next generation, the trainees. So we would like as a society to make sure that we have a place for the residents and the new graduates uh, where they can uh, have mentors and they can have a leadership pathway within the society uh, about how to become a leader, how do you advance in sciences. So one of the main things that I'd like to, uh, to accomplish here is to actually listen to the next growing residents and graduates, see what their issues are, what are their job opportunities out there. Uh, with current hybrid systems, and hybrid would mean combining anatomy with metabolism physiology. So a lot of our residents are following this dual board approach of the American Board of Nuclear Medicine along with the American College of Radiology. And what happens is with the advent of these new radio traces and advancing technology, 
the job market opportunities are great for these new graduates who are training in these new technologies as well as in new radio tracers. So I'm very optimistic that the future uh, for the field is going to grow. And I think that the therapy aspect of nuclear medicine, in my mind, is going to be as, as, as big as radiation oncology is today or immune therapy someday. Wonderful. Thank you. Thank you.